I think it's uh, I think it is economically wrongheaded, and I think it's frankly embarrassing for um, uh, a country that um, has been uh, founded on the basis of um, scientific integrity, innovation, and the entrepreneurship that comes from that. Um, our um, one of our greatest assets as a country is the scientific and research expertise that we have across the federal government complex, whether that's in the Department of Defense or the DOE national labs, and in our universities uh, that are uh, often funded through uh, federal research dollars. That asset has uh, delivered extraordinary, extraordinary wealth and job creation to the United States for uh, decades. It's part of our DNA, DNA uh, as a country. And so uh, it's wrongheaded to uh, indiscriminately uh, cut funding for uh, the science that is undertaking the data that people uh, in both the public and the private sector use and the scientists uh, and the dedicated public servants who do that work. And it is, uh, it is embarrassing to be in a posture where you have uh, the federal government diminishing uh, the important role that science plays in our life, in our education system, and in our economy. Um, so, um, so certainly, uh, it's uh, it's challenge. It's a problem. And again, you know, I would also just encourage everyone to recognize that you have to separate the rhetoric from the the reality. And while uh, the the budget that the administration put out was a these are a festival of, of horrors in terms of the cuts that's the beginning of a long process and uh, so there is still time and opportunity to make the case for why for example cutting basic research funding for things like uh, carbon capture sequestration nuclear wind and solar is a uh, an economically uh, unwise thing to do I refer to it it's penny foolish and pound foolish so, but that process is one that is actively underway in the U.S. and where uh, it's important that people who care about these issues raise their voices.